how you can find the perfect campsite in a popular destination this weekend in seven minutes or less. Welcome, fellow travelers. It's time for another episode of the RV Podcast. Answering your questions, sharing tips, suggesting great trips and off the beaten path adventures, and always staying on top of the RV lifestyle news you need to know about with great interviews and inside industry information. Here's your hosts, award winning journalists Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Hi, everybody. We're the Wetlands. I'm Mike, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Hello, my dear. Hello, Michael. And this is episode 354 of the RV podcast. And uh, right behind us is Bo, who I don't think uh, our YouTube videos people can watch. He's right there. Um, we just gave him a bone because we started to do this recording, and he... He erupted. Started he started barking. Barking like crazy, so we thought a bone might keep him happy. <laughs> but the problem is the bone has been in the freezer, and it's very cold, and it's a little too cold for his delicate little elk hound mouth. So you might hear him panting and crying as he waits for it to warm up, but uh, maybe it'll keep him quiet. We just got back from a weekend camping trip mooch docking at our son's house. And if you haven't done that, it's great fun. It's a great way to go visit friends or family. And... Uh, not have to dirty their sheets. You have your independence, you have your space, your bathroom, everything, your food, everything you need, and it's a great way to visit folks. Yeah. You're not a burden at all. We'll have to do a, a, a little more extensive video on it and maybe interview a couple of people, but uh, you know, in these times of very crowded campgrounds, um, you can do some great mood stocking. Just take a look and see who all your friends are. And <laughs> where they live. Where they live and where you want to go. Speaking of campgrounds, uh, our friend Mark Kep comes by in a little bit on the podcast. Um, Mark, you uh, are familiar with from his Hidden Gem Campground reports that he does each week for the podcast. But Mark has been talking about this awesome new technology that his company, CampgroundViews.com, has developed that's kind of like, I guess, like Google Street View, only for campgrounds. You can actually do a, a virtual 360-degree tour of the campsite and, and see where where they are, what you can see from the campsite, what kind of a campsite it is, and you can actually then book those campsites. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Uh, and so we said, will you do a demo on it? And are you convinced that you can, you can find us a good campsite? And he said, yeah, he was sure. So he came by and in the interview, I challenged him to find one this weekend. And I asked him uh, how, how long he thought it would take. And he thought he would be able to do it easily within 10 minutes. Um, well, it's actually done in seven minutes. And it's all uh, live in our interview. And you'll see that uh, coming up in just a little bit. But that was really fun. So how to find a campsite this weekend in a popular destination in seven minutes or less. That's a pretty clickable title, don't you think? Yes, it is. It's, and it's not real clickbait because it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, also this week, we have uh, a new sweepstakes. We announced it on our Ask Us Anything program the other night. But here it is. It's uh, from a company called Hokena. And, and it's uh, a great little bright orange carrying case. Holds your... Uh, Lights. These are. You find yourself in a situation where you're stranded and you need to let people know you're there. These are this. emergency LED lights. They um, will flash like like that. You know, if, if those of us watching YouTube see it, it kind of going around a little circle. You can make it say an SOS. There's an SOS, uh, and. Uh, you can also make it uh, a steady light, like a flashlight. Mm -hmm. They can be seen a, a mile away. And uh, they also give you a couple other things uh, as well. It's a, it's a really handy kit for emergencies should you find yourself on the side of the road. A magnet on the back in case you need to put it on your vehicle. Yep. And I like the fact that it can be just a regular flashlight as well. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, we, we're going to give we're going to give three of them, and we're going to give you uh, give five of these kits away to people who enter the sweepstake. And um, you can see that right there on the screen below. Just go to rvlifestyle.com/sweepstakes, and you'll be able to uh, to plug right in. I wonder if I can hear Bo chewing. 
<laughs> Bo's not barking. He's always doing something. He's chewing his bone back Barking, there. panting, and now he's chewing on his bone. <laughs> well, that's better than barking, right? That's better than barking. That's right. That's a lot better than, uh, than barking. Uh, so we're good. All right. So we want to start it with a very nice message from Brad Olson. Brad uh, left us this video message, and uh, we'll share it with you now. Mike and Jen, I'm Brad Olson from Minnesota, and I have a comment I'd like to share. With so many people waiting for RVs, we wanted to share what we've been doing to pass the time. In May of 2020, we started looking for an RV, and by August, we had ordered a leisure travel van Wonder Rear Lounge. So for the past 14 months, we've been watching hours and hours of YouTube videos, joined the Facebook group, read a lot of your blogs, and have also been listening to your podcast while exercising at the gym. In fact, I've listened to the past three years while working out. While doing all of these activities, we've been compiling a list of notes, which we've been putting into a three ring binder, which will be used as a reference when our rig finally arrives. My advice to others while you're waiting is to educate yourself on the RV lifestyle and during your wait so you're ready to hit the road when your rig finally arrives. Your dedication and sharing of your knowledge has been a godsend to myself, my wife, and to many, many others, I'm sure. Thank you for your dedication and for sharing and uh, we really appreciate it. Hoping to see you at a campground someday and hoping you have many wonderful adventures on the road. Happy trails and God bless. Well, God bless uh, you, Brad, as well. Uh, what I a love, kind message. Yeah, and, and some good advice oh, for, yeah. for a lot of people who are very impatient, and I could understand being impatient, waiting for your RV to be built. Um, and uh, we're delighted that you found us, Brad, and we know that your wait will not be in vain. You will be uh, delighted when you get it. And, and you are going to be so, you are so prepared. You are ready to go. So he's got, what did he say, a three-ring binder, binder filled up with our advice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty good. How many of you travel with cats? We know a lot of you travel with dogs, but let's not forget all those RVers who bring their cats along with them. And uh, someone on the RV Lifestyle Facebook group, Lisa, she was sharing some pretty amazing photos of one such RVer they came across in a campground recently. It was a very elaborate cat cage built onto the main slide out window of their Class A motorhome. The cat or cats, they could go in and out at their will and they had at least uh, what, four levels that they could explore along with a climbing structure as well as a roof to keep the rain off them. So would, that is incredible. I would like to see how it all goes together when they put out the slide and how do they assemble that thing? Because it's got to be six or seven feet tall. It's huge. And about that same length and about a foot and a half, two feet wide. How do they put it together? And I'd like to see how it all comes apart and where they store it all. And I mean, they've got a real conversation maker yeah. with that. So you really gotta like your cats to make that a four <laughs> story cat cage. Uh, I'd like to see that cat. That's gotta be one happy, <laughs> happy cat, cat, one cool happy cat. Also on Facebook this week, we got a great video that was made in 1974. And it, um, it shows a small little lightweight travel trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of like a fifth wheel though. You know how that little part in the fifth wheel comes out in front and it mounts, you ready for this? On the roof of a Volkswagen Beetle, a VW Beetle, right in the center of the roof. And uh, we're going to play this for you. Uh, I think those of you listening to us, uh, just listening on your app, will be able to, to pretty much uh, pull together what, what the story is about. Um, but if not, you can go back and on the uh, RV Lifestyle channel on uh, YouTube. You can actually see this video. It's from 1974. Uh, listen up. You'll also hear the audio. With this trailer, a compact owner can now join the camper-crowded highways on a weekend trek to some not-too-distant Shangri-La. The trailer hitches to a reinforced point about midway on the roof of the car. This makes the coupling more secure, thus eliminating sway, floating, and jackknifing. The trailer itself is very light, and this hitch assembly distributes the weight evenly over all four wheels of the car. 
The unit contains a full bath, kitchen sink, range, closet space, and according to the manufacturer, enough sleeping room for four adults, or two adults and three children. However, we suggest that the occupants be friendly. Of course, after spending several hours en route in this car, they'll either be good friends or bitter enemies. We've heard of maneuverability, but 360 degrees? If Dad performs a few of these gyrations while the family is having breakfast, there could be a trailer load of trouble. What's amazing to me is that was, uh, that was done in 1974. And, you know, it's that little rounded Volkswagen Beetle, and the, the mount goes on the roof, and the Beetle can kind of, like, turn around in 360 degrees, and, the, and because the, the, like, like a fifth wheel hitch on the center of the roof of the thing, of the, uh, of the, you know, the, of the Beetle, as it goes around, the trailer kind of backs up, and anyway, pretty amazing. I don't think that ever took off, that idea. <laughs> I, I wonder why. I don't think it did either. I, I think with that little of a car, you couldn't hold that many people or that yeah. many supplies. There was no room in, in the No in room the car. in the vehicle whatsoever. Anyway, thanks uh, for those who uh, sent us that. It was, actually, I got a couple people who sent me that. Oh, did so they really? it, was, it was pretty fun to see. <laughs> that it was. And we got one more post from our Facebook group to share. This one was shared by Jerry Moore. It was entitled, What Could Go Wrong? And it depicted a flooded campground and a camper standing in about a foot of water and he was going to the electric pedestal and he was pulling out his electric cord and going to plug it in so um water and electricity i don't think so yeah i i don't know where that was taken but there's got to be a foot of water that he's standing in oh, he's got plastic on his feet. it was like he had like a raincoat or he took a bunch of 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 stuff because it looks like it's raining out as he took that picture but as a reminder, you don't mess around well, with electricity. Yeah, it doesn't really look like a good idea. No, I don't think so. I mean, even though he did try to make boots out of plastic, I'd be afraid water would still get in there. Yeah, I but don't When think. you're young, you're adventuresome. All right, that's what we've been up to this week, and that's some of the material that you guys sent us. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have the RV News of the Week, so stay with us. All RVers need specialized emergency transportation coverage to cover air and ground ambulances, return to home services, and vehicle return. You only have a 68% chance that those services will be completely covered by your major medical. The sad reality is that a lot of people believe they have that coverage, but it turns out most carriers that claim to cover air ambulances only cover you for a hospital to hospital transfer and offer no coverage to get you to the initial hospital in the first place. The truth is 68% of air ambulances are hospital to hospital. Here's a map of all the places in the U.S., that getting to the hospital in the golden hour is not possible without an air ambulance. And with an average cost of $52,481 for an air ambulance, why would you take the risk? Go to peaceofmindforrvs.com today and take a look at the true emergency transportation coverage they offer that covers it all. The coverage can save your life and your life savings. Check it out, peaceofmindforrvs.com. Jennifer and I are members, and we urge you to consider it too. Peace of mind for RVs.com. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds? Competing for reservations? Paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. Jennifer and I visited the Landings, a lakefront community just west of Nashville, Tennessee, that offers incredible lakefront RV properties up to 70 times the size of typical RV lots with frontage on the biggest lake in Tennessee. We loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you own it outright. Not a timeshare, your property, your way. You can have your own private dock. You can landscape, garden. They're pet friendly. It's gated and secure with high speed internet. There's even free RV and boat storage. A wonderful place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations. It's ready whenever you want. Dockable lake fronts starting at only $59,900. There's financing and big discounts on multi-lot packages. For information, visit rvlakes.com. That's rvlakes.com. 
Welcome back, everybody. And now it's time for the news of the week. Well, the big story broke actually just before we started to record this week's podcast. And uh, we kind of predicted this on our Ask Us Anything YouTube show on Sunday night. But uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of uh, Canada announced that the Canadian border would open as of, I believe it's August, August 9th. 9th, August 9th, to non-essential travel. And that would include... RVers. Now, the border has been closed since March of 2020. But um, so, so August 9th, you can go visit Canada. You can take your RV there, but you do have some uh, uh, protocols that you have to follow or they won't let you in. Right. You need to have your passport that you have been vaccinated with, with about two weeks having gone by to prove that the vaccines have had time to work. And you also, don't you have to have a current Yes. Test that you you don't have COVID right now. You have to be uh, asymptomatic, meaning you don't have any right. COVID symptoms, and you have to have a current test that shows that you're negative, that you don't have it. Now, you mentioned a, a, a vaccination passport that's that proof of vaccination, mm -hmm. but you also, uh, and this is just always when you, you also have to have a passport. Uh, it isn't your driver's license anymore that gets you into Canada. You have to have a passport. What Jen and I have is we have... Um, passport cards you can get little passport id cards that will fit in your wallet so you don't have to take your big passport with you um, but you can go to canada with those requirements uh proof of vaccination uh and uh um, you have to uh have uh had your last vaccine your last dose at least 14 days right. uh, prior to you trying to enter canada and again uh, no symptoms and uh, you have to have a negative test. So there's a lot of hoops you have to draw through. Yeah, there through. are. That negative test, what's that, like a week or, you know, uh, when do you get your test? Well, it's, it, I don't know. It doesn't say when. Usually, you know, I mean, maybe you had a negative test two months ago. So I think it's got to be current. Current. It wouldn't have to uh, be current. I'm it, surprised they don't have little instant tests right as you try to cross yeah. over. <laughs> so anyway, good luck with that. But it's nice to think that the border is going to open. Now, that's for U.S. Uh, travelers only, people from uh, other nations. I don't think they're allowed in quite yet yet, but that's coming as well. But some progress on that border being uh, opened. We got a really nice note from our friends Deb and Jeff Spencer about campgrounds being closed because of the mess that people make in the dispersed camping areas. And this is a, a good news story out of that because a group of uh, concerned people uh, who love to do dispersed camping, RVers, uh, they have uh, banded together. They started kind of a, a, a funding movement to save a dispersed campground in the Bridger Teton National Forest. Uh, it was a very popular campground, and um, it had been used a whole lot last year, a whole lot this year. Uh, human waste was really starting to accumulate, and as the Forest Service has been doing around the country, it looked like they were going to shut that down because they don't have the manpower to go in and clean up all that human waste and that junk. So this group uh, got together and they started fundraising, a lot of individual donations, and uh, they raised a lot of money. They raised $60,000 from private donations as well as? As well as two corporations, shout out to Dometic, and a shout out also to Campendium. Campendium is kind of like a campground review site, lots of information on camping, and Dometic, of course, makes all the uh, RV accessories. And it was so much fun because their opening ceremonies, they had ribbon cutting, but it was toilet paper. Well, what they did, we didn't tell them what they did with this. They, they built uh, two vault toilets in this area where all the human waste was found. So now there's, there are toilets there. And that's pretty good. And then tell about the opening ceremony. And then ceremony. the opening ceremony, they used toilet paper for the <laughs> ribbons, for the cutting of the ribbons. It was cutting the toilet paper. So that's fun. And you know what I found really interesting out of that story is, and I didn't realize it cost that much, but in not only did they build that, but they also had to pledge enough maintenance money to make maintain these vault toilets. And and it's expensive. 5000 a toilet a year. So $10,000 every year for these two toilets. To, to clean them, to maintain them. But uh, congratulations to all those folks. That's the kind of story we love to report, a group of concerned RVers, a couple of great corporate RV industry uh, citizens uh, helping out with that. 
60 grand to build these vault toilets and then pledging 10 grand a year to clean the two of them. Thank you guys. And thanks to our friends, uh, Deb and, uh, and uh, Jeff Spencer for sending us uh, that story. So nice to get a good news story. There was a very sad story that we want to report it happened uh, this past weekend in Michigan, uh, in Lenawee County, Michigan, actually Brooklyn Township. There was a music festival there and uh, three young guys. In their 20s. In their 20s uh, were in a travel trailer yeah. and they were actually in a campground about four or five miles from where this big festival was held. And um, they went to bed late Friday uh, they were found unresponsive and pronounced dead in their travel trailer on Saturday. And the, the cause of death was uh, a common one that we hear several times a year. A generator. A generator that was right next to their, um, to their camper. And the fumes from that generator built up carbon monoxide inside the trailer. And these uh, three young men lost their lives. Mm. It's, Such a sad story. Yeah, it's under investigation. Police haven't uh, done a final uh, uh, release of what the cause was, but that's certainly the what they were expect they were suspecting. And for all of us, it's a reminder of how deadly carbon monoxide is. So you want to make sure your the main source is a generator, um, and also propane. Your propane fires and propane stoves. You want to make sure all of your equipment works properly. And the best way to do that is have it inspected at least once every season. And for all of you who love amusement parks, you are going to be so excited about what has opened up in uh, the Cincinnati area at Kings Island. Kings Island is a great amusement park, one of the best in the country. And they just opened a $27 million uh, campground. It's huge. It's 53 acres in size. Wow. Uh, costs about a hundred bucks a night to stay there, I mean, a little bit more with all the fees. Uh, it's just outside uh, the amusement park. They got shuttles going back and forth, but this is a luxury park. I They've mean, got pools for just adults, and then pools for for kids. everybody with kids, and I'm sure all kinds of pools they for kids. Got fitness centers. They've got a great restaurant there. Um, they have walking trails, and and like we said, dining options. Uh, super clean, roomy bathhouses, uh, laundry, fire pits, uh, grills, picnic tables, you know, the things you'd expect at a campground, and supposedly really good Wi Fi. I am a big fan of like Fort Wilderness, and I've been watching the, the stories as, uh, as this uh, Camp Cedar, as it's called, uh, was being built. They had some delays because of weather earlier this year. I think we ought to go down and visit that place. I would love to. Yeah, and uh, maybe I can get you on a roller coaster? No way. <laughs> well, somebody will meet me and go out, let me on with them. <laughs> well, right. But anyway, Camp Cedar, $27 million, 53 acres. Uh, this is great. We're seeing all across the country a lot of RV parks being built. I mean, there's a lot of money in RVing. Everybody's caught on to how popular it is. So um, there are regularly going to be stories that we'll be reporting now going forward about big RV campgrounds opening. And uh, what I like about some of these resorts is they're not those crowded spa spots with people 10, 15 feet, and if you open your slide, you're five feet away. These are really nice, roomy spots. Camp, you know, they're expensive. People don't like expenses. You can still boondock, but um, this is- I think is, this is so much nicer than a hotel. Oh, it is. And you're in, like we found out mooch docking. You know, you're in your own RV. You have your own ensuite bathroom. It's your bed. It's your germs. All of your things are right there. <laughs> and you're not, you know, bothering your friends or neighbors. You know, if they clean their, you know, they don't have to clean the bed to make, you know, the sheets for you. Uh, and if you're and you're, if you're staying at a place like a luxury amusement park, you don't have to be in a hotel where who knows stayed there before you and how clean it is. And anyway. We're, 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 we're optimistic as we see these kinds of uh, RV resorts open, and uh, our little uh, stint of mooch ducking made us even more optimistic about how we can use our RV. So we this have is three really kids. a good trend. We have three kids, three different parts of the country. That's three places we can mooch mm -hmm. duck. Uh, all right, hey, we'll be back right after this. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, 
Uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it, as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Let's talk about protecting your RV from the elements. And the best way we know how to do that is with EmpireCovers.com, makers of quality covers for your RV that will protect them from rain, mud, pollen, and other elements that you have to waste your time cleaning or worse, that can end up damaging your vehicle. Whether you own an RV, a travel trailer, or a camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help you protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. They offer high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect every cover. Comes with a free warranty to guarantee it remains durable. The RV podcast listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit them at EmpireCovers.com slash RV Lifestyle. EmpireCovers.com slash RV Lifestyle. EmpireCovers.com. Protect what you love. Welcome back. And now it's time for your RV questions of the week. And remember, you can post those questions to us. We, you can also even ask them on your smartphone. Do it as a selfie. Send them to us at Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Uh, the first one comes from David Gregory. And David says, we just purchased a 2020 Wonder rear twin bed. Only had... 2,500 miles on it. That's a great buy. And are loving it and planning our trips. As we're getting used to everything, one question I have, can't find an answer yet in any of the, any of the uh, manuals or materials, is can you shut off the AC from the main panel? If so, how? Yes. You know, it's a little iPad-like tablet that you have mounted. That's your control center. And uh, there's a little thermometer menu on the left of it click the thermometer menu and then you'll see your air conditioner is either set for on or auto uh, if uh, either one of those are highlighted it's on or it's on automatic which it'll go according to temperature so you don't want those highlighted and that will keep it off so we've learned that ourselves just uh, turn off auto turn off on and the air conditioner is off so mm -hmm. congratulations uh, that's a great buy i mean you're getting a 2020 with 2500 miles on that's that's a barely used rig. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we got one here that I just got to share. This this came from uh, Juddy Jones. Can you uh, see what and, she said? And the question is, would like to see some articles on uh, pop-up camping, and they have nine dogs in their pop-up camper. So we camp with nine dogs in a pop-up. Obviously, well, they must be small dogs. Well, Juddy, I would rather see an article on how you camp with nine dogs in a pop-up camper. <laughs> we had a pop-up camper uh, many years ago. And we camped with uh, three kids and uh, a dog the size of our bow, a 65-pound elk hound. Mm -hmm. And um, it had a porta potty, which forever is the reason why I don't like cassette toilets, because I hated emptying those things. So getting back to the nine dogs, I would think a lot of places wouldn't let you in with nine dogs. I know a lot of places wouldn't let you in. Uh, campgrounds just don't want people with nine dogs. And, uh, you, you know, I mean, they make more noise unless you have dogs that don't bark at all. Um, that's nine dogs that you have to clean up with. Uh, I would be amazed if any campground that you would call would allow you to camp with nine no, dogs. I wonder if this is a tongue-in-cheek question. I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> so here's the thing. If it's if it's tongue-in-cheek, you got me. But if it's not, <laughs> you got to send me a picture of you camping with nine dogs. Um, I don't know. Don't uh, know if we have a mama dog and she has well, a her, bunch of Well, her email is uh, three pug babies, so they must have little pug dogs, I guess. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I don't think she's 
I don't think she's uh, pranking this is us a here. Legitimate question. Yeah. Hey, one other place that we answer a lot of RV questions is every Sunday night. We do a one hour live stream on the RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube in which we take in real time your questions that you can post uh, online. We stream on YouTube and on Facebook. And here's one that came from one of our recent Ask Us Anything shows. Tina La Placa. Van life is my dream to do upon retirement, but I am solo now and I have no girlfriends to travel with. There are solo female travelers, but I think it's uh, safer with a companion. What do you think? Well, we meet a lot of solo women travelers and you did a whole video interview with a whole bunch of them what, mm -hmm. what, what did you find out from that they were all comfortable traveling by themselves it's kind of common sense use your instincts if it doesn't feel right at a campsite leave but uh, they they were just fine and you also can be in your own rig by yourself and join a group and travel with a group because it, sometimes it's fun to be with a group you don't have to do everything they do but if you want company they're there and if you don't you can be by yourself you'll quickly make friends and yeah uh, they'll say hey i'm going up to big bear this weekend you can there's they've got empty extra spots open you want to go and you'll go and you'll you'll soon find that there's a whole community out there on the road um, but uh, a large percentage a surprisingly large percentage of all the rvers that we meet in normal years this is not a normal year it's so busy but in normal years, a large percentage are uh, female solo travelers. Yeah, what is what is the percentage in the Class Bs? I think in the Class B, it was at least 15% that- I it was uh, larger than that. It might have been, but I think one manufacturer told us it was, 50, he think he thought 15% of, and that was road treks, road treks uh, back uh, several years ago, that uh, they thought 15% of their, their uh, buyers were solo females, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Tina, I, I I wouldn't worry much about it. I think you'll find it's it's great and there's help everywhere. So so you wouldn't go off boondocking in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, some do. A lot of women some do. do. A lot of men do. It's not... uh, yeah, but I wouldn't do that until you're comfortable with it and you know the ins and outs of RVing and. Uh, but always, you said it right at the top. You know, trust your gut. Trust and your gut. it sounds like there's no bow. Our dog is Bo, and he barks no all the dog. time. Yeah. <laughs> no dog, yeah. No dog. Yeah. Get a dog, Tina. Dogs will bark, and that's always good for security. But and it's good for companionship. Bo didn't bark. He did not bark. He did Ty not didn't. bark. No. Don't forget, you can catch Ask Us Anything every Sunday night at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube and on Facebook. And don't forget to send us your questions or comments. Use the selfie or just email us, Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. If you've visited an RV park lately, surely, besides all the RVs, you've seen these e-bikes. Jennifer and I are proud e-bike owners, and the e-bike that we chose are Rad Power Bikes. America's number one e-bike brand offering direct-to-consumer pricing on powerful premium electric bikes. Jen and I love our Rad Power Bikes. We use them to go around the campground, to explore the area we're in. I have the city bike version. Hers is the step-through model. And those are just two of a whole bunch of different models offered by Rad Power Bikes. All of them can reach 20 miles an hour with zero pedaling. But of course, you can also pedal and you've got five different levels of pedal assist to make the going just a little bit easier and fun. You can go between 20 to 40 miles on a single charge. Now, here's the deal. You can save $75 off if you use the coupon code RV Lifestyle at checkout. Plus, of course, free shipping. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And Battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. 
Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Time now for our interview of the week. Looking for an edge in planning your next RV trip? especially when it comes to finding a campsite in these times of overcrowded campgrounds. Finding an open campsite can be a real challenge. Our friend Mark Kep of campgroundviews.com is going to join us with a look at some truly breakthrough technology that takes RV trip planning into a whole new level. Now, of everything we've seen in our years of doing the uh, RV lifestyle, uh, the technology that Mark is going to show us is truly a game changer. I challenged Mark to test out this technology in real time, searching for a campground near a very popular destination that had open sites that we could instantly book for this weekend. You will not want to miss this interview. So let's quit talking about it and see and hear for ourselves. Now, we should note for those of you listening to the audio version of the podcast, while you get a good idea how this works by just listening to Mark, you may want to also check out the video version of this podcast over on our YouTube RV Lifestyle channel so you can see what Mark is describing. Okay, now let's get to this week's interview, The Great Finding and Open Campsite Challenge. Here's the interview. Well, on the other end of our uh, video connection is Mark Kep himself. Hello, Mark. How are you? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing really good. I have um, been following this, as uh, as you know, and many of our listeners know, uh, as you've developed this technology, and it is now ready for prime time. I'm I'm I, I'm going to put you to a challenge in a minute, but maybe you can tell uh, a little bit about this this cutting edge technology that you've developed that really does change the way we can find campsites. Uh, it's at uh, campgroundviews.com, but uh, give us, you know, uh, a, a 10,000 foot overview and then bring it home. How, how do we use it? So in 2009, my wife and I sold everything we owned and we bought a fifth wheel and we started traveling the country. Had no idea that I was gonna do anything related to the campground industry. But we came across almost immediately the big problem everybody has, which is finding a campsite. Where are you going to stay at? And, and is that campsite going to be right for you? And, and so we built Campground Views to be a visual tool, photos, videos, allow people to actually see what the parts look like. Then you can make a, a decision. And this 360 video technology came out a few years ago. And we started doing those. And people liked it. They said, this is really good. I like being, It's like Google Street View. I can look around. You know, It's, it's a nice tool. But they said, I wish I knew what site I was looking at, and I wish I knew if that site was available. And so that was the technology we built. It takes the, the Google Street View, right, the 360 video tour, and then it combines an augmented experience. So when you're looking at a site, you'll know if that site's available because it'll be red or green. And then you can actually click on that site to book it. And so bringing this technology to bear, to making it easy for us to go and virtually tour a campground. It hasn't been an easy task, but it's a very obvious one, right? I mean, every every camper I talk to is like, yeah, that's that's obvious. I, I, some people are like, I haven't even thought about that, you know? And, and it's, so it's one of those solutions. It's a lot more difficult in reality, but through the support of other campers, we're actually making this thing happen. Now, a lot of people are saying, of course, I don't have any technical skills. And uh, as I've looked at this, one of the things that strikes me, and, and I, I would assume we'll see this when we actually ask you to do this challenge that we're going to give you, uh, but up in the upper right, there is like a little map that shows where you are as you are navigating with the camera. So you actually see the image of what you'd see if you were, if you were right there. And then you see on the map where you are, so you can kind of follow that map and go around the campground. That is amazing. I mean, that is so simple to see. You see the little green dots where they're open, and red where they're closed. Um, I, I'm impressed. But the purpose of, of our bringing you on for our topic of the week is to actually do a demo. Now, the dilemma I have is that uh, for those who are in our uh, audio audience, um, they can't see what you're about to show us, but they can hear. And I hopefully, hopefully then when they get to a computer, then they'll go to our YouTube RV lifestyle channel and they can look up that part of it. Cause this is going to be, I think pretty interesting. Um, but, but Mark, I'm going to run this, whether you find it or not. So are you pretty confident you can find us something in under 10 minutes? Yeah, depending on where it is, Mike, I know you're going to hit me with some hard ones and we'll see. I I'm actually pretty confident we can do this. 
Yeah, I'm going to hit you with, with a hard one. Jennifer and I have uh, uh, a favorite spot that we love and that in these times of lots of pressure, uh, it's hard to book. Um, it's a tough one. So the Mike and Jennifer challenge for you is Glacier National Park. Find us a campground mm -hmm. in which we can get to Glacier, uh, you know, with, in a reasonable short drive and enjoy Glacier and still be someplace this weekend. <laughs> Oh, Glacier man. National Park area this weekend. Go. Okay, that's a good challenge, Mike and Jen. Let's go find a campsite um, for this weekend near Glacier National Park. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to campgroundviews.com and enter Glacier National Park. Going to the Sun Road is good enough, and I'm going to click search on that. The default results that we'll see are from within a 50-mile radius of the National Park, and there are 70 campgrounds and RV parks within that 50-mile radius. And you can see them on this map here. There's a lot of locations that you can stay. That's a good thing. That means we might be able to find a campsite. On average, each campground has 60 sites, so you're looking at at least 4,200 campsites. We're going to find something. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the National Park. Uh, and the first one that comes up, actually, Rising Sun is within the National Park. So I'm going to click on that. We have a virtual tour of that. Uh, we also have some photographs. These are older virtual tours, but it's better than nothing. And there's information on this site. But we want to see if we can actually book a site right now for this campsite. And so we're going to scroll down in the National Park Service website and find out. Right now, we're only able to book sites within Fish Creek and Many Glacier. Um, a lot of the other campgrounds, including, including this one, Rising Sun, are closed um, during the summer. So basically what we're getting is that it'll be a headache and we actually can't book anything within the National Park. So that one is out because that one we can't do for this challenge. You can wing it, though, and maybe find a first-come, 1st first serve in a few of those campsites. Um, at the gate, they have a sign that tells you if, if sites are available. And they also have an information option where you can get current campground status. It was off that page I was just on. So that gives you an idea if it's worth um, first-come or first serve. The next thing we'll look at is actually full hookup campgrounds. So I just flagged electric because that'll give me um, campgrounds that have at least electric hookups in them. And you notice that they follow the outside of the park. So we've got the west side, or I mean the east side of Glacier National Park, and then the west side of Glacier National Park. East side is more remote. It's scenic. It's backed up to the Indian Reservation, and it's a very pretty area. But we're going to have better luck on the west side because it's more traffic. So I'm going to focus in a little bit on the west side of Glacier National Park. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to scroll through my results and see what we've got. So we've got a, a KOA. I'm going to add that to my list to call. And North American, I'm going to add that to my list. Mountain Meadow, I'm going to add that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the phone and call these campgrounds and RV parks. Why am I calling? The reason being is we're doing this at the last minute. Their reservation engines may work and may help you, but like North American, I know, for example, does not have, uh, or that's Mountain Meadow. Yeah, North American right here. Doesn't have an online reservation system. They ask you to either fill out a form or call. And so I'm going to call because last minute, I'm probably going to snag a cancellation in one of these parks. Imagine that worker. They just got a call from somebody canceling last minute, and then you call them up and say, hey, I'd love to get a site. They're going to fill it right away uh, rather than go down a waiting list or anything else. It's a nice little trip. So that's a way to grab one now, but it still doesn't solve or address the question, which is find us and book us a site right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to utilize our new technology, which are these virtual tours. What they do is filter us down and show us recreation.gov properties. That's who we integrated with first. And there are a few campgrounds. One is Big Creek. This is a forest service campground. What I know just going into it is that this one is literally always booked year round almost. Well, not year round, not in the winter, but because um, it's not open. Uh, but in the summertime, it's booked pretty much all the time. So if I set our date parameters right over here on the calendar to this weekend, hit confirm and see what we got. I'm looking up here. There is nothing available. This is a first. There are first come first serve campsites in here. So you could wing it, and this could be one of the campgrounds that you stop at to see if you get a site available. But again, it doesn't solve our problem. The next area I'm going to look at is something called, or a place called Hungry Horse Re Reservoir. So I undid the virtual tours to sh make a point here. You see all these green icons along Hungry Horse Reservoir? Hungry Horse has a number of campgrounds along the banks of the reservoir. And the reservoir itself is very scenic.
very pretty. It's dam. There's an awesome dam that you go across, very large. And then there's campgrounds along the shores of this lake. Very beautiful area. And there are a lot of campgrounds. But to make a booking, I'm going to go ahead and filter down to the ones that we have within the recreation.gov system. And I'll just pick this uh, Lost Johnny Point Campground and see what we've got. So as we load this up, I am going to change my dates over here on the calendar to when I am my screen recorder button is right there so I'm gonna hit confirm and see what we have we actually have a site available so now I'm gonna head through this campground what we see is paved roads paved sites a wooded setting scenic wooded setting too a really nice forest here um, we saw those photos of the lake so we're close to a very pretty lake uh, it is located in a more remote area so it's gonna be quiet at night a very pretty spot it's got pit toilets right here. So we got pit toilets. There's uh, actually there's an example of a campsite right here where there's a tent set up in the trees. So your parking pad is right here and that there's a tent right up there. So pretty spot. Uh, the virtual tour allows us to move the screen and look around and actually see the sites much like Google Street View. It's a video and so you're actually on our videographer who's you can see him right there. Our videographer is riding through on a, a bike with the camera set up on it. It's a, there's several advantages to that, which in this case is one of the disadvantages is that this videographer, he went pretty fast. So if you want to take a closer look, you can hit pause, look over at the site, get more details. You can even jump ahead a little bit by hitting play as you're looking at the site and see if that's the right fit for you. Then hit play and continue on. And as we near this campsite, I'm seeing that this is a very pretty campground. Not a bad spot. I may have found our winner. As we come up on the campsite that is green, I was looking up here on the top right, um, it should be right here. There it is. There's our available site for this weekend. I want to go ahead and pause and take a look at that site. That's plenty big. You could fit at least a 35-foot um, trailer in there or a 35 foot RV and have a spot to park a vehicle right here. You have views of the lake, the spot itself, site number 12, which I can confirm is campsite 12, is able to be booked right now. So we have now just booked a campsite this weekend near Glacier National Park. Not bad, huh? Mark, that is not only pretty neat, that, that truly is uh, cutting edge. I mean, I don't know of any other uh, planning trip software or web service that is that uh, responsive, that accurate, that that's pretty cool. Uh, and you think we could do that pretty much any place in the country. So despite all the stuff we hear and we've been reporting about, about everything being so busy, there's still plenty of good uh, campgrounds out there. There are plenty of good camp. It's there's two parts to it, right? There's there's finding out where you're going to go and then finding the campgrounds you're going to stay at. And in the end, that's why we built this tool because it, it empowered you. As you saw, we actually went into that campground and we're able to find that site. And what you're looking at right now is literally beta version. This is version one of where we're going with this technology. And for video production, what we're doing, you know, so there's two pieces. We have to actually go and send a videographer to capture the footage. Then we have to get it into the system, right? So there's those two pieces. Right now, we have a, a team that is just finishing the entire state of Washington. Last week, they finished the entire state of Oregon. And we are bringing these online every day. So the goal is, is to get everything on it to where this tool allows you to book. Because the one thing that's holding everybody back from camping and going camping this week and at the last minute is that information on where I can go. And, and that uncertainty is what, eh, it's not worth it. Let's just stay home, right? You know, it's that uncertainty prevents people from actually going out and traveling and adventuring. And we're trying to help reduce that uncertainty. Well, I wanted to take that spot you found. <laughs> that was an awesome spot. And it, who would think it's right on the waterfront? I mean, it's right out your door. And uh, that's awesome. Uh, Mark, campgroundviews.com is the website. We will put a link in uh, the description and then the show notes and all of that stuff. Um, but uh, there is a, obviously this is a service. And as I read, it, it's like 50 bucks a year, which is pretty, pretty reasonable to start off with for that plan. 
Yeah, the the year right now is fifty bucks. We have a lifetime going right now, which is two fifty. Basically, we are funded by campers. We have no investors, no outside corporate donors. We're completely aligned with the campers, and so the members join. And then you guess what? Once you join, you can email me and tell me, "Hey, Mark, this doesn't work. I want this. I want that." And we listen to you. <laughs> All right. Well, we will send them campgroundviews.com. We found, oh, I didn't, I didn't give you the time. I don't know if you paid attention. You did that in seven minutes, seven <laughs> minutes. And you spent the first couple of minutes, you know, showing us that, yeah, you can check commercial campgrounds and, and that, that was pretty easy, you know, so you can find that if you need full hookups, but the actual search, you know, you, you were there, you nail it seven minutes, uh, that's technology I think anybody can use. Mark Kep, campgroundviews.com. And Mark, you'll be back next week with one of those hidden campground gems that you've been reporting on, right? Yeah, and I think that that campground may qualify as one of them too. So maybe we got the one done this week too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. That, that counts for this week, but we need a new one <laughs> next week. Hey, Will Mark Kep, always great to see you, my friend. And uh, we'll check with you next week. All right, see you then. That was a really cool piece of technology. I couldn't believe that Mark found those open campsites so close to Glacier and that we actually were able to see the campsites, even the scenery and the lake around it, and then actually book it all in just seven minutes. It's kind of like Google Street Views, except for campgrounds. Yeah, that's a that's a really good analogy. Uh, and I like the motto for Mark's website. It's uh, uh, see where you're going. And that's exactly what it does. It takes RV trip planning to a whole new level. And again, his website is campgroundviews.com. The membership fee is 50 bucks a year, but our followers, if you use the promo code RV Lifestyle, will get a discount, nice discount. Again, campgroundviews.com, code RV Lifestyle. When we come back, Patty and Tom Burkett will be joining us with another great off the beaten path destination. Stay with us. Have you had it with overbooked, overcrowded campgrounds? Then check out Harvest Hosts, where RVers can overnight for free at more than 2,400 wineries, farms, microbreweries, golf courses, and attractions. Harvest Host is a membership service for those with self-contained RVs looking for unique, beautiful, and peaceful overnight camping experiences across North America. When you become a member of Harvest Host, you can camp for free at all these places. Jennifer and I are Harvest Host members, and we've made so many great memories at Harvest Host locations. There's no charge for camping, and your Harvest Host membership fee is easily made up with just a couple of stays. Plus, you have awesome places to stay. If you use our special affiliate link of rvlifestyle.com slash HH, you'll automatically get 15% off the cost of your membership. That's 15% off, but you must use the special link, rvlifestyle.com slash HH. Welcome back, everybody. And now it's time for our friends Tom and Patty Burkett and another Off the Beaten Path adventure. Hey, Jennifer and Mike. Cambridge is the county seat of Dorchester County on the Chop Tank River and has a lovely waterfront trail on some striking buildings, not to mention the house where Annie Oakley and her husband shot ducks on the river from their bedroom balcony. Drive 15 miles east along US 50 and you'll get to Vienna population 250. Vienna is not without its own charm. It was in the 1700s a shipbuilding town and a center of tobacco farming. Hansel, a large brick farmhouse nearby, was a center of trade with the native peoples of the region in the 18th and 19th centuries. It's also close to Leighton's Chance Winery, a delightful harvest host location where we spent a night. We happened upon Vienna partly because it's along US 50, one of our go-to cross-country roads, but mostly because it's the closest grocery store to Elliott Island. We were exploring the variety of islands along Maryland's eastern shore, from Deal Island with its historic skipjack fleet to the Hooper Islands with their desolate seaside cemetery and outstanding crab. But maybe the most interesting island visit we had was to the island with the least to see. Elliot Island is remote. If you want to go out for dinner or get a haircut, it's a 30-minute drive to Vienna or an hour to Cambridge. Leaving Vienna on Elliot Island Road, we passed along a part of the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. What's that? Patty asked as we rounded a bend. I stopped in the road to pull out the binoculars. 
Stopping in the road wasn't an issue. Over the 90 minutes we spent on Elliott Island Road, we saw three other vehicles. What Patty had seen was a bald eagle sitting on a rock out across the marsh grass. Our eyes began to attune themselves to the terrain. There's another one, I pointed, and Tom saw a pair on the opposite side of the road. As we slowly crept down the blacktop, reluctant to put down the glasses, we saw two dozen or more of the magnificent birds. Some were sitting in snaggy trees, others directly on the ground. A few were flying low over the grass, looking for what, we couldn't say. Eventually, we passed out of the marshy area, and the numbers dwindled rapidly. On we drove to the island, which was nearly desolate, with a few tumble-down buildings and a few still hanging on homes, a once bustling fishing community now mostly abandoned. On our return trip, we saw not a single eagle, and we were reminded of a visit we made to St. Mark's Wildlife Refuge in Florida in the Florida armpit. We drove into it on a rainy morning and saw countless birds in the roadside marshes and grasses, even a couple for the life list. The next day, about the same time, hardly a bird in sight. You might call it luck. You might call it patience. What we've discovered is that if you take your time and wait for a place to offer itself up to you, you can have some pretty fine surprises out here off the beaten path. You can read Tom and Patty Burkett. They're on our RV Lifestyle Travel blog. We have lots of stories and we put new ones up all the time. So get in the habit of checking that out as well. We love the Burkitts. They have this knack of finding great spots everywhere. Can you believe it? That wraps up another episode of the RV Podcast. And let's use this opportunity to tell you all to uh, send us your comments, your questions. We love getting uh, those uh, strange photos and videos that you find on uh, Facebook and social media. We would love it if you would do us a favor. Use your smartphone, take a uh, video of you, just put it in selfie mode and say, Hi, Jennifer, and I'm Mike, and ask us your questions or make your comments. And you can email those to us, just like you uh, post a, a selfie on, uh, on social media, except email them to us at Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. We'll be back next week with another episode. Happy trails.